Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Today I bring you the second card for the mini series of videos called Christmas Cards Ideas. This one is a more vintage card and I'll show you my own receipt on how to create your own rust paste to create that patina oxide effect, among other things. This is a long video, maybe the longest I've made, so grab a teapot full of tea or mulled wine if you are in the Christmas spirit already and enjoy. Okay, let's get started. First I'm going to create my scene with all my stamps and I'm going to select a die from Simon Says Stamp, the circle stitches, to create a window. At this point I will not create the window, I'll just place it there so I know where I want it to be so then I can stamp all my scene. So I'll mark with a pencil the lines where the window should be and then I'll start stamping and I'll start with the tree. I'm going to create a mini forest of three trees only and I'm going to use archival ink, the Acorn by Wendy Vecchi. I'm going to ink it up very well. Archival inks are waterproof so that will ensure that for my next step the stamped image will not smear. I'm just cleaning that base because I don't want ink there. So first I'm going to stamp that and I'm pressing everywhere in the stamp because I want all the details to be transferred to my paper. So I'm taking my time. Maybe using the stamping platform would have been better. And now I'm going to create a mask. And this is because I want to create, as I said, a mini forest of three trees. So I'm going to place this on top of what is already stamped and that will protect my image. And when I stamp the other two trees that you will see, they will seem that they are in the back. So it took me a long time to actually cut all this, but it was worth it. <laughs> and I'm going to place another post-it note at the bottom to just cover that area. And I'll do that like a slope full of snow. So just tracing it with a pencil and then I'll cut it with the scissors. And I will be ready for my next two stampings. So the second tree is going to be a little bit underneath that one to pretend that it's a shorter one. So I'm making it very well and I'm pressing down. And the fact of having the post-it note, it makes like, well, the stamp to highlight a little bit more. So it will create a little bit of white space. It will not stamp to the very edge of the post-it note. The second one is going to be smaller even, so less tall or more short. <laughs> and now if you remove the mask, you can see the mini forest. Just marking that slope there. Do you like it? I do. <laughs> so now I'm going to put that sentiment over there, which reads best wishes for the year ahead. And that will be all that I will stamp on this side of the card. The next part that I will stamp on is going to be the inside. But in the meantime, let's go and create that window. So I'm selecting my cuttle bag and I'm putting the different plates A, B and C. Now A and C are on my base. I'm putting my die with the blade facing down and I'm making sure that it doesn't move with some washi tape. Then I put the B plate on top and I pass it through my cuttle bag several times to make sure it really cuts it. So once cut, I have my window. And I'm going to mark that window in the inside part of the card. I will use that to create like a mini scene or mini decoration with the deer and the holy plant. So I'm going to stamp my deer there in the middle of that circle again with archival ink, the same color. This stamp is super detailed. I mean, well, the deer has so much detail on it. It's impressive, really. So I'm pressing it down very well to make sure that all the ink is transferred. And there you go. So it will look like that. I will add some decoration. First, I'm going to erase the lines. And then I'm going to use the holy plant to decorate the rest. 
and I'll stamp it all the way to make sure that I cover all that like if it was a pattern paper. This stamp is the ESC07 and you can see it full in my Etsy shop if you want to see it. It also has a pine cone that is very cute. So if you want to check it, just go to my web. It will be in the description section below of the video, okay? And I will there include all the different products that I'm using in this video. So far you cannot see many, but there are a lot, <laughs> you will see, because we are going to use many techniques. So I carry on stamping. And once I finish, you'll see that everything will be stamped and it will look like if it was a Christmas pattern paper. Very cool. So I'm just making sure that I place the stamp what I want first. And then once I'm clear on which area, then I ink it up and stamp again. Of course, I ink, I add too much ink. <laughs> I mean, it goes beyond what I need, but I prefer to have more than less because here I can't repeat the stamping. Almost there, just a few more spaces to fill in. And then we will go and color everything. So to color, I'm going to use infusions. I'm starting with golden sands. So just putting there in my craft sheet, putting some water and then doing a first wash out. That instantly give me a vintage look that I like very much. Once it's dry, I'm going to move on to different color. This one is Sunset Beach and I'm going to add that red into the berries of the holy. Same technique, you put a little bit on your craft sheet, you put some water and you have a watercolor. I'm adding a bit more red until I'm satisfied and I hit set in between. And the next color and final is going to be Olive Tree. This one took me a long time, so I'm just going to cut a little bit. So you can see a little bit of the process, but also I don't bore you too much, okay? Because the video really is long, <laughs> okay? So just keep on adding as much as infusions and water as you need to cover the entire surface and enjoy the coloring process here. It's really relaxing. I have one idea in mind that I would like to do which is preparing like a coloring book. Well, actually I did one for my grandma already and I just used my different stamps that I have. I have a lot now, so. <laughs> and then I stamped the images for her so she could actually color them. And well, she actually uses pencils, but you can use this technique and it's really relaxing. And you, when you start adding color, you can see that everything pops up and brings the images to life. I really like this technique. And I'm working in this part of the card first because I'm going to apply a glaze, a crackle glaze on top and I wanted to set it aside and it takes time to dry. So this is the first step to make sure that, yeah, basically it's dry for what I needed. Now I'm going to apply Vintage Photo Distress Ink, the regular one, on the edges and here and there. And that will add me a more vintage look. You don't have to put it everywhere, but I find that if you basically work on the edges, your eye kind of goes into the middle and well, it looks very nice. Here I'm just checking how it looks. I'm cleaning my surface with a little bit of water and a cloth. And then I'm going to apply Distress Crackle Paint, Clear Rock Candy. My idea was to use the spatula, but I read in the instructions that you can actually apply it with a brush as well. So I went for the brush instead this time, just to see how it looked. And it was okay, because although you can see the texture at first, it kind of afterwards gets homogene surface, if you add enough, of course. And when you apply it, it's pretty sticky actually. So just make sure you cover everything. And I think that the thinner the layer you put, the smaller the cracks. I don't know, you experiment with it and let me know what you get. So now it's shiny and smooth, but it will become, well, shiny, but crackled once it's fully dried. So now let's go back to the outside of the card and I'm going to use similar technique. Golden sands with water 
and a brush. First, I'm going to erase those lines from that window. I don't want them. And then I'm going to apply the water all over the surface, except on my snow. It's going to be covered at the end, but I prefer to keep it white. And it's just applying that same wash. And because I applied very little water, you can see even more brush strokes than before. It's less homogeneous. So I'm applying another layer to get more water on top. And try to add some texture afterwards, just by applying some drops here and there. And blobbing them with a the cloth. You don't see them very well, but well, they are there. <laughs> Hidden maybe, but they are there. And then the next color that I'll work on is just the green because we only have the trees. And again, it took me a while, but it was a nice process. So olive tree again, and water. And color everything, little by little. And because the images are not super definite, I mean, if you go beyond the edges, it's fine. You just more or less guess where the tree is. And it's fine, it will look very nice, don't you worry. And after some time, you get the complete scene colored. And as I did before, I'm going to add some vintage touch with the vintage in distress. So I'm going to make sure that my surface is completely dry for that. So vintage photo and I'll apply to the edges, both to the outside and my window. Again, this adds more interest and more texture and it makes that because the borders are darker that your eye goes to the center of the scene. And the actual ink that I'll add on the window, I'm trying to make it bigger because I know that I'm going to cover this with the rust paste. You won't see a lot afterwards, but well, it will be there. <laughs> so now I'm just testing it with the card base and I'll work on the card base. I'm going to create my rust paste with these fresco paints, chocolate pudding, Aptum fire, pumpkin soup, and finally gold. To add texture, I'm going to select grunge paste, distress collage medium, and the sand, this one from r and Art. So I'm going to apply some grunge paste on my craft sheet, then similar amount of sand, and then some distress collage medium just to make sure that my mixture dries together and the sand doesn't escape. You could substitute that with glue, as I did in this other video that I'll show you in the link appearing on the screen right now. It's an art journal about a tea scene and I added those oxide touches with a similar combination of things. <laughs> so just have a look if you want. Okay, once everything is mixed, then I'm going to split that mix in three parts. A big part, a medium part, and a tiny bit. And then I'll use chocolate pudding on the biggest one, because that will be my base. Then I'll use the orange, which is autumn fire, in the middle one, shake it well and put a blob there. And finally, pumpkin soup for the tiny bit one, just a little bit. And I'm going to just mix everything together to create my pastes. So the idea is that you work with the biggest color first, then you go to the next one and then to the next one. So mixing it very well. And at this point I decided that I would add some copper to the mix, to the orangey, just to add a little bit of shine there. I don't know if it's very obvious, but I don't know. I felt like I would like to add it. And the gold, it will be added as well, but just to the very end, you'll see. And to apply these pastes, I like to work with some flat brushes, the ones that you would use for stenciling. So I get the thick brush first. This is at normal speed first. So I'm just pouncing it, okay? Normal speed finishes and now I'll just go again back to the normal velocity for this video. 
So I'm just making sure that I covered the area a little bit fast here. So no pouncing on that second part. But for the rest, I'm pouncing. So basically, I'm just making sure that I move my mix and I place it into the paper. I'm preparing also two brats, also rusty. So they were originally gold and now they have this first layer of brown. So more pouncing on all my edges to make sure I grasp as much sand and texture as I can. And I apply also that on the area that I paint very quickly. And look at that, I'm doing just a zoom so you can see how it looks. And once I finish with the brown there, I'm going to apply it also to my window. So that little window will have a margin or a border in rust as well. And because it will be framed on the base, I'm just comparing in the next moments, I will be comparing the two margins and what's the width between them. You will see that this one is very narrow in comparison, so I'll change my mind and reduce the size of the actual card base. Because now, when you see them together, for me, the outside edge is too big, too wide. So I'll be going and cutting them. So I'm placing it on that part, and then I'm marking it with a pencil, and I'll just cut that excess with my Tonic Studios guillotine. I really like it. It can't be compared to those trimmers that have a little cutter on the edge, really. Okay, now we change color and we go to the orange. So again, pouncing. And this time we want to apply less. That is why the first, well, puddle that we made was very big. And this one is medium because basically we need far less. Okay, we just want a touch of orange on top of everything, but you don't want to cover the whole brown, okay? And I'm going to repeat that also in the window and also in the brats that I'm making it rust as well. So I prepared even too much <laughs> of that um, orangey. Now I'm cleaning my brush. I'm just using my scissors to remove the excess of that paste. And then I'll move to the yellow. Again, when I'm using a color, I'm just unloading it a little bit of my craft sheet because I don't want all that powerful thing over there. So that's why you see lots of um, orange dots and then yellow broad dots around my area because I'm not applying it directly from the mix. It's just a little hint and touch. Again, I'll apply that in the window and in the brats. And one of the brats I applied too much and then I found it too yellow. So for that one, I'm going to reapply the other two pastes, the brown and the orange. And now magic comes. Now it's time for the gold. And with adding a metallic, you just, well, get magic, really. And it's lovely. Now it really becomes rusty. I'm craving to try this with actually the turquoise colors and so on to make like the, this coppery, not coppery, um, the bronze effect. But I haven't tried yet, so so far I just stick to the rust, <laughs> which I like very much because, well, my favorite color is the brown, as you may already know if you follow my videos. And just a little bit more of gold also there in the... Uh, window and as well as in the brats and this will be all for the rustic part so now i'm going to make a hole on the card base of course because otherwise i will not be able to see my deer and instead of using the same size as the actual die that i used before i use a bigger one so I have more room to actually make the hole and make everything match. So I'm going to first clean my surface. Look at how easy you clean the craft sheet. You just remove with spatula the excess and because it's dry, it's super easy to remove. I mean, the wet part, you just pick it and then the dry part, well, as well. <laughs> it's very, very easy. And just a damp cloth. 
to finish it off and then I have a clean surface to work on so I can bring my castle back for that step that I was talking about so this was the original circle and I'm getting the next big one and I'm placing it there so I'll create that hole I could have actually used the same one and then manually perhaps well increase the circle if I need it but I decided to go for this way so I put up a, a plate B plate and then C plate and I'll pass it through the cattle bug several times to make sure that it cuts properly and that is done and as you can see I can move it around a little bit and my hole still will be wide enough as to not see the background so now I'm going to make just two holes for the brats so I'm placing a cut and dry foam used old I don't care it's just to not destroy my craft sheet and then I'm passing them through the holes that I just made and then I'll open the legs and because they are very close to the edge and the legs of these brats are very long I'm going to cut them and for that I'm using the team hole scissors these cut well a lot of materials and I'm so happy I can cut metal with them they are so useful okay so now I'm going to apply the snow if you remember my previous video that I'll link now I created this effect already this is like a, a fake snow and I'm using grunge paste first as if it was I don't know cream in this case so I'm just covering the entire surface to kind of create a slope of, of snow I wanted to have texture but in a snow way if you know what I mean so sloppy not um, batches or blotches of the grunge paste that is why I'm moving uh, the spatula back and forth to kind of create some well lines over there and then once I'm happy I'll just remove the excess from the outside and then while it's wet I'm going to apply some embossing powder in this case I'm going to use Frosted Crystal by Ranger so I'm applying it there it will stick to my grunge paste because it's wet I'll make sure I remove the excess that it's coming in the trees if there is any with a brush so it's clean surface and then with that scrap piece of paper I can put back the remaining embossing powders to the jar and then I'll just heat set that and make sure that you move your heat gun across the area you don't want to focus in one spot this is because the embossing powder will create like a layer a plastic layer on top of the grunge paste and the grunge paste is still wet and will try to come out and burst it so you don't want to burst it <laughs> so take your time and heat set one piece at a time and now I wanted to add more snow this time to my trees so I went directly to the grunge paste and with a brush and started painting my trees on top like if it was a snow and if they had a snow on the top not everywhere just here and there and I need to work on one part at a time but I found that this technique just grabbing the grunge paste directly with a brush was giving me too thick snow and I didn't need so much and it was difficult basically to move it around so I decided to change the strategy and just water it down a little bit but still work on one part at a time because you want to make sure that your grunge paste is still wet while you apply your embossing powder so I'm just putting some grunge paste on my craft sheet some water and mixing it with the brush then the brush was too loaded so I decided that with the spatula I will remove the excess and flatten it down and now my brush is a bit flat and I can work on my surface and apply the snow as I want so one part at a time and repeat the same process with the embossing powder while it's wet you put it there back to the jar and heat set it and I will repeat it many times but, <laughs> but I'm going to avoid you to see the whole thing so because it's too boring and I'm just showing you at the end basically that I was doing it that there and hit setting the last bit and done so now I'm preparing the card base the other part so the, the inside let's say 
So I'm going to just get the same size as my card base that I was working on before. And then I'm gluing them together with my ATG gun on that flap and that's it. And now I'm going to place the inside, the crackled uh, part area that we worked at the very beginning. So I'm placing the deer through the hole, making sure that I put my front where it should be. This is a bit tricky, so I take my time because this should only be done once and okay. <laughs> so once it's there, I remove it and I mark it with a pencil line where it needs to be. And the excess, I'll cut it. I leave it wider in purpose just to give me some room of margin and of movement if I needed to. So now I'm applying the Distress ink into that crackled area and this is because I want the ink to go through the cracks and define them. I'm not interested this time in actually adding the ink on top of the surface just for the look of it. <laughs> it's just that I want those cracks to actually color get colored. So I'm going to get the cloth and then remove that ink from the surface, which is plasticky, and then, well, I can see the cracks that they've been tinted. So all that it's left is assembling. I'm going to use Mod Podge for this. So I'm just opening the jar and I'm putting it there on the lid itself because it's not going to take me long. And I'm going to just place all that glue on that surface, on the area delimited by the two pencil lines, because I know that it's there where I wanted it. And then I'm using also the marks at the edges to know where and how centered it needs to be. And I'm pressing down. And this crackle surface is very, it's not flat at all, <laughs> basically. It's curved on the edges. So I'm making sure that I add more glue on the bottom part and press down for a few seconds and with those few seconds then you're making sure that the contact between the two papers is perfectly done and everything will become super flat i love this glue i mean this jar <laughs> you may you will see that i always reuse this one but it's because i have like a gallon <laughs> a gallon bottle under my table and i keep on refilling it so yeah i really use a lot so now I'll use this stress collage medium to just attach those two ribbons up and down. Because in this case, well, the collage medium kind of sticks even quicker and I prefer that and it's sturdier. So I'm just going to do that up and down. And I'll put all the list of the supplies that I'm using below you are interested in seeing them and which ones they are. Maybe I can't find the ribbon, but <laughs> if I find something similar, I'll link to it. So you have it. So I'm just cutting from behind to make sure that it's very flat. And then I'm going to apply again to the bottom another velvet ribbon. This is velvet ribbon in cream color. And I think it matches very nicely, don't you think? So just cutting off that excess and we are done with the inside. So now on the outside, I could stick this with um, double side tape, but because it's very wonky and it has that window, this time I prefer to go with the Mod Podge. So I'm applying it all over the place and making sure that it's, well, everywhere <laughs> and it's wet. When you apply two papers together, you need to ensure that you apply enough Mod Podge and that it's wet when you actually put the two surfaces together. If it becomes dry, it will not stick anymore. It dries super quickly. So you need to be pretty quick when you do these kind of things. And then press down very hard and for a few seconds. And in few seconds, really, the, well, the surfaces are sticked at first and then it's just a matter of few minutes till it's 
100% dry, basically. That's why I like this one very much, because it dries super quickly. And then if I find that some spots are missing glue or that they need a little bit more of patience and well more care, I just add a bit more and press a bit more and that's it. So I'll repeat the process of adding glue here and there a little bit more until I'm satisfied and everything is touching and flat and as I want to. And basically that's it. This is the card for today. I'll show you some pictures now so you can see it properly and appreciate the crackle and all the texture that we put. And well, I hope you like it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more videos like this one. And click the ring bell button just to be alerted by YouTube when the next video comes up because I'm doing this Christmas card series, Christmas cards ideas, so a new video will come pretty soon. And if you want to miss it, just click that button, okay? If you have any comments and you'd like to give me any hints or tips or whatever you want to say, just send it into the comments below and I will read them all. You really make my day when you leave me a comment, so don't feel shy and just write what you want, okay? And now I leave you with two more videos with more inspiration. Should you want to see the first one that I did on this series, just click there. And another one which I hope you like as well. Nothing else for me. So thanks very much for watching until here. It was a long one, I know. So thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one, okay? Bye!